you all for joining. Um, as it's nice weather outside, and this is not uh, the place to be right now with sunshine in the Netherlands. Thank you. A little bit about me. Uh, I'm Arjen Gelblom. Uh, if you want to contact me, you can do that either by Twitter, by email. Just send me an email or any questions you might have. I, can, I will reply uh, if I find the time. So don't hesitate if you want to know anything more and just pops in your head when, when you left the room. Okay, I work at First Aid. We build cool stuff like Millennium Falcon from uh, Lego. And we do cool stuff like having security conferences, small ones, on the 10th of July. If you would like to know more, go to our website, firstaid.nl. But is anyone else having audio problems? Can you raise your hand if you're having audio problems? I should be on channel zero, yeah. Now, can you switch with the one next to you? Okay. Um, we do the cool stuff, but we can't do that during business hours. So during business hours, we're a Java consultancy specializing in Spring and Java AA. And of course, with DevOps, Sec DevOps, DevSecOps, Kubernetes, OpenShift, Docker, and all the other things that form our buzzword bingo. But above all, I'm a proud father and a husband to my wife. But of this little red hat hacker, he's uh, specializing in social engineering stuff, especially for candy. That's enough about me. So DevSecOps, a little bit of introduction. Why do we need DevSecOps? Why do we need security? Because we don't want to end up here on the headlines. And as you can see, it happens a lot. Uh, one moment. Uh, but you say we don't have any data, so we don't have data leaks, so we won't end up on this leak. Handbrake is just an app for Mac, does video encoding. They got compromised. They got infected by malware, so the application you downloaded, installed by them, was malware. So, next slide please, yeah. You say, we don't even have that. I don't know what for company you are, well, we don't have, if you don't have a product or data, but then still you have your reputation. Phishing was one of the most lucrative cyber crimes to commit. It's now uh, surpassed by cryptoware, but still, you have your reputation. If your website is hacked and then set up to be a phishing site, it will cost you a reputation. Okay, we need security, but why me? Why am I responsible? We have a security team, let them be res responsible. Uh, we have a tug of war between uh, one end, the security, or and the DevOps dev team. A dev team want to do fast iterations, they want to have changes as much as possible. On the other hand, security, they want to have everything tested, they want everything to be okay, so that's a slow process. A little bit of history, how did we get there? Because, okay. We used to start with waterfall. We design, we uh, code, we test, and we could do security testing in here, and then we deployed it. Then we went to Agile, same thing. Design, code, test, and still we had test phases where we could give it to the security team, and at the same time that we did accept acceptance testing, they could do the uh, security testing. Then we went to DevOps. Now we're in a problem, because now everything is automated. This phase is too short for security testing. We can't wait for a security team to do a test. And that's where DevSecOps comes in. What we now do is we add security to all layers for everyone. So not the security team anymore. And that's why we're there and we are responsible for it. Or as Werner Vogel said at AWS reInvent 2017, security is everyone's job. I won't read the rest, you can read it for yourself. Okay. Then to the mistakes. No security at design level. 
They're not in order, and these are not the most common. These are common. That first. We, we now all know this one. The numbers are a bit uh, OK, but we all know it. To fix a bug, it's uh, uh, cost effectively more uh, in design than it is in production. But now we add a breach to it. That's what a breach will cost you in reputation, in uh, bringing down your site, and everything else that comes with it. This is not even including GDPR, because that's a whole different level if you get fined and stuff. Well, this is it. So how do we do security by design? Um, Microsoft, and as an open source club, it's one of the few things I think uh, or think great are of Microsoft, um, have a secure development lifecycle. It's well documented. It's uh, not easy implement implementable. It's easy to start with. And they uh, give you uh, all kinds of, for each phase in your uh, development, they give you a uh, uh, some number of certain actions. OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project, has a bit like this as well. They have an SDL as well, not as defined as Microsoft, it's a bit looser. And a few days ago, or a few weeks ago, Slack released one as well, which is more aimed at agile processes. Go SDL, which is written by PHP, but they call it Go SDL. That's where you can start. But we're looking at the requirements phase. Um, if you're an architect, you love drawing boxes and stuff. And this is the phase where you can go wild. Um, as we can see here, we have an application with all kinds of processes. So this is not an app, it's a process. And we have actors with them. And in between, we have uh, information going. We have all request, identity goes there. And then we have boundaries. And on those boundaries, boundaries you define what kind of problems can I expect. So for a user, you could expect that a customer is doing a um, uh, illegal withdrawal request, minus 1,500 euros, which isn't possible for a withdrawal. This is something most teams can do at the start. Now you say, we are already started. We're five years in development. We can start with this, but that's a whole big problem. Start with acceptance criteria. If you have acceptance criteria right now, it has to do, uh, uh, it has to respond in JSON and it, uh, has to give all kinds of information. Let's say we're searching for a user. We search for a user. I have to give it a username and then it has to return certain data for a user. Uh, now add your security acceptance criteria as well. Uh, it should be not be possible to SQL inject or inject anything. It should not be possible to uh, enumerate over it. That kind of information you can add there. First, you probably need a security expert to uh, identify for you what problems are, but developers will catch on. This is how you can start with security design from uh, now on in your agile process. Next one. We don't have an education on security topics. You see this one a lot um, in the sense that a developer is a developer. They go to developer conferences. They do developer courses. So they will learn the next greatest and latest JavaScript, Java, anything framework. But security is overlooked. The OWASP, what I just told you, uh, publishes a top 10 every year. And I think they've been doing it since 2013. 2003. Um, the OS Top 10 was meant to be that they release some, they release it, um, we fix it, and the next iteration they have a new num uh, Top 10 because uh, we fixed all those problems. 2017 they released a new version, and 80% was still on the first one as well. So 
that results in this. This is Java code where we have a uh, bit of code that's injectable. We have a form that belongs to it. And then we get a report or a tool gives us, hey, there's an injection possible. When entering drop table writers on the uh, input field for writers, the table will be dropped. And what does a non-educated developer do? They fix it. They will replace drop table, just remove it from there. This is very easy and it's easily identifiable wrong. But if you go into C-Surf, uh, cross uh, scripting attacks, all those kind of things, it's harder to see for them. Because they do not uh, understand what the real problem is. What they get is, if I put drop table in here, it goes wrong. So let's fix drop table instead of they know that it's an injection error that they need to fix. And you will see that uh, education is coming back over and over again. Not checking for common vulnerabilities. This is a OWASP top 10 as well. Who knows which uh, flaw this is? Anyone? That's hard because you're not wired up. This is the crack attack. It got heavy media coverage in 2017. It's a attack against WP, uh, uh, WPA protocol. But in 2017, 20,000 other vulnerabilities were discovered, like these. So although bugs like Heartbleed, Shellshock, Drown Attack made hack headlines that were too big to ignore, these one go unnoticed by most of us. This is where uh, the uh, attack on Equifax came from. They noticed it, they, f they found it. It was too hard to fix because the whole process wasn't there to fix it when it arose. Um, yes, the spring one, for example, allowed uh, users to bypass important security constraints, which is a fun thing for a security framework. So, and these are just common found issues in code. A Spring Boot REST service, uh, it works. This is all you need for a Spring Boot REST service. Uh, normally I would say guess what the number of lines of code is, so let's do it the other way around. Let's show of hands. Who thinks that the dependency you pull in just Java code is more than 50,000 lines? Who think it's more than 100,000 lines? 250,000 lines? More than a million? We're almost there. You pull in 875,000 lines of Java code on dependencies. That's all on third party. That's just Java code. If you look further down, it's almost a, it's almost a million lines. But I'm using open source. And as we know, Linus Law, uh, the more eyes look at it, the more shallow the bug will get. Some it's free quoted, um, said that open software is secure. Considering that a bug such as Shellshock exists in an open SSL library for 22 years, we can say that's not relevant anymore. It's not there anymore. We can say that Although a lot of people use it, maybe if you look at it, some things go unnoticed because they're obscure. Okay, what can we do about it? Uh, multiple things, we have a lot of uh, uh, open source tools. Let's see where I can stand without falling off the podium. The Node Security Project is for Node, Retire EOS. Um, it's a JavaScript specific checker uh, the OS index supports different kinds of information. Uh, NPM, NuGet, Maven, Bauer, Chocolate Tree, and it's basically JavaScript.NET, C Sharp, and Java. Uh, dependency check is from the OWASP. I have a little bit of a demo next slide. And the bundle audit, audit is a command line checker posted on Ruby. So for most languages, we have something. And there are, of course, 
commercial is most of the time add their own data to the CVE database. A uh, little bit in information CVE database, the um, uh, American government collects all known and uh, uh, vulnerabilities and puts them in a database which is public, so it's available to all. And those tools all check against uh, that information. An example, this is hopefully working. If not, we're just doing a OWASP dependency check. It takes about a few seconds and it's not working so right now. Uh, and it will fill the build because it finds two uh, errors in a dependency. And it's Spring Boot, which is a month old and already had a pretty uh, serious flow in there. Why is my clicker not working? Um, I'm going pretty fast through my slides, by the way. Features before security. Number four. Uh, if we have a penetration check, if we have a, a uh, automated tool that's checking something, uh, we have a report coming in from an external party that's saying, hey, something is wrong with your website. That has a priority. High, medium, low, even P1 to P5. And the business has the same kind of values. How do they stack up to each other? How can we say that a P1 equals a P3 in business? It's not possible. So there's a, a big of a translation problem there. You can't easily define uh, one uh, priority with the other priority. And every tool has its own priority list. So one might give high, medium, low, the other one might give uh, uh, one to five or one to 10 even. So what we need is a product owner who's talking to more multiple businesses, marketing, uh, uh, sales and everyone. There needs to be someone who's voicing your security. So someone from the security team needs to be added to that group and has to make a point for the security issues that he or she deems necessary and get priority. So that they, as a team, can decide what a unified priority is. Now, what if you don't have a security person or a security team in your company, you're too small. Then there's a uh, uh, concept of a security champion. Every company has a, uh, um, every team most of the time has someone who's interested in learning more about security. They don't have to be the top most expert in everything, but what they can do is learn about the, the, the uh, standard stuff, be a security champion, and be the voice of security within a team. So they will go to the meetings and uh, will say, and like with technical dev, which is most of the time a team effort, they can say, okay, uh, this is something with a priority. Now we need to uh, put a focus on this one. Otherwise, it will go wrong. Uh, security and CICD. This one has two options. Either we have no to almost no automation of the security, so the security theme, uh, security is done by the security team manually or even by the team manually, or the other way around, the dev team saw a talk online, a whole lot of tools came by, and they put everything in their pipeline, and now the thing is blazing with everything and doing everything. Why don't we have automation? Sometimes you have a security team that's saying, I don't want, I don't trust your security test. Whatever you do, I want to do it myself as well. Then you need to pull them in, because then you're doing SecDev up with speed bumps. You're still depending on them to sign off on things that we want to have automated for the most part. Uh, like functional tests. These are essentially the same as acceptance tests, but now we focus on security. So you can annotate them as security focused, 
can I log in? Can I log out? But also, can I not log in with a wrong username and password? It's fun how much time you uh, think that the login works, but it doesn't work because the simple fact is it accepts everything. You didn't, didn't test it. You just test, does admin admin work? Yeah, it works. Oh, great. But blah de blah, does, does that work? Yeah, it works as well. That shouldn't work. Uh, this can be done with the, the, the default stuff. Selenium, WebDriver, uh, whatever you're using right now. Uh, one thing, unit test uh, can be used for security, but it's more the functionality. What you can do is if you have a sanitization method, you can test that by unit tests, but the rest is more or less a flow. They should work all together. So you probably your sanitization method is already tested by unit testing, so I don't consider them really security testing, but just a unit test. Test against known weaknesses. Oh, it just fits on the configuration and infrastructure. Uh, these use tools like BDD Security, uh, Gauntlet, um, Mitten by AppSecure, which can talk to third party tools uh, and do an NMAP scan and do the, all that kind of uh, uh, information. They can run. Uh, little scanners, SQL injection scanners. What you then can do is you test your weaknesses for known stuff. Are you still using the open SSL that was uh, uh, vulnerable to heart bleed? It can be easily tested. Nmap, do we have the ports open that need to be open, but also are there not any other ports open? If you have a web server and it's only serving HTTP traffic, why should there be an SSS H port open? Close it. These are well suited for automation. They are well known. They are documented most of the time. Uh, and uh, most test frameworks like Gauntlet bring you a default set of tests. Uh, OWASP Zap is another OWASP project. Uh, also falls under that, this one which uses, um, uh, what you do is you feed your website to it and then it tr tries all kinds of combination on uh, CSERF, XSX, uh, XSS, and that kind of stuff. And then we have security scanning from the automated hacking tools. I can't say everything, every, but every penetration test starts by kicking up some tool that's scanning basic information, and map to see what ports are open, just talk to. Um, uh, whatever website you're using, there's a specialized tool for it. Those tools, they use in the start, from that point on. You can automate them as well. So use a web scanner um, to, to test your website. Take that work away from the security team so that you can then give them a uh, report where you say, hey, all this information we already did for you. Do you now trust that our application is safe up on a certain level? From that point onwards, we're now at a point, if, if you have this all done, you, had a, you, know, you, you should be in a dialogue with the security team and maybe they don't want to test every release or every delivery anymore. They want to take one every few months or one every month, depending on your delivery rate and the number of teams they have, because they know that at the basic, you're set. Uh, Sun says an AppSec poster, so don't take pictures of this one, just go to the website, resources poster. And for every stage, they give you a number of uh, tools to use in your automation. Again, don't be the team that thinks, hey, nice poster, I can use all those uh, uh, tools, uh, add them all to our pipeline, and it's now shiny, having all those uh, colors and glitters. Add one. Make it report only high uh, problems. So severity high. Then fix those, at least identify those. 
give them a priority according to your standard with a security expert. From that point on, maybe choose another tool or set the priority lower, depending on what you want to do. That's how you should take this list and look into it. First aid is part of conclusion, so that's why this is logo for conclusion. Um, I'm a bit fast, but no one is probably going to shoot me because we have a nice sunny weather outside. Um, conclusion, although all these are related to the developer or the DevOps team, the DevSecOps team, it's actually the product owner, management, and anything in that layer that's holding back all this stuff. Because if you do not educate your people, you don't give them time to go uh, on a course, they won't get educated. They can look at resources, they can have stuff, but nothing is going to teach them as much as a course. If you're not going to have uh, someone be a champion, for example, he's not going to get time to, uh, to read stuff, to, to look, at, look at stuff, have some time set apart from doing the basic development work, he's not going to fill that role and you're still in the same problem. So management needs to, be, to have a buy-in, they need to have uh, uh, stuff. So that's a conclusion. Although my talk is on the team, the biggest problem is your management. So for all the developers out there, they're probably now thanking me. So thank you, that's me. Um, are there any questions? Probably raise your hand and she will come by with a microphone. Let me see if this works. Hold on. Um, yeah, suppose I'm in a situation where I have a security team and they have all kinds of nice tools which they report on every, let's be optimistic, every six months. Um, how do I get them to think along with our team to get into the pipeline so that we have things more automated? Okay. Um, first, I would um, have them sit together. So let them give a demo to your developers um, what their tools are, what they do. Then a developer can uh, see, oh, that's something I can uh, uh, automate uh, and um, we can do this and this with. Then the other way around. Now the developer is going to give a presentation to part of the security team or the security team and shows them uh, this is the tool we picked and this is what we're going to do with it. Do you agree? And if not, then we are having a dialogue and maybe we'll pick another two or they say, oh, if you do this, this and this, then, then we agree. That would be my start a dialogue. Let them show them what they have, and then a developer can do the buy-in, and then make it generic, so that another team can pick it up. Yeah. Any other questions? Then that's for me. Thank you all for joining.